Okay guys, welcome to the next setup I've got here ready for yourself. It's in the M3 GT3 and it's around Road America. Haven't been on the track in quite a while, but had a recently Grace Air and an RUF GT3, which I'll have the setup for you. Should be uploaded the same day as this, pretty much. Um, I'm going to go through a quick track guide with yourselves, quickly just to um, point out a few key parts of the track. Um, the lap was far from perfect, there's only um, 17 laps there, lap 17. I only put like an hour an hour and a bit of practice into this lap so and I've not driven this car for quite a while so I think there was quite a lot of time to come off this lap anyway we're going to go down the start straight and we're going to look out for the tarmac on the left there there you see there we're going to break just past it and go down into third gear I think we could have possibly stayed in fourth gear for that corner we're going to go hard on the power and then we're going to look out for the shadow here on the trees if not it's the number two marker there you see and we go down into third gear and stay tight on the right hand side there, you want to stay tight to the kerb and get on the pile nice and early so you get a good slingshot out of the corner, really important for the, for the um, exit there so you gain a lot of speed down the straight um, I think I had actually done it another 100, 200 faster in this first sector but we're going to break now just past the 300, in between the 300 and the 2 there and we're going to stay tight on the kerb again, hard on the power and then we're going to look out for the bridge there and we're going to break just before it and stay in third gear and then you see there we're going to stay tight to the kerb run a bit wide use as much curb as you can as you get on the power and then into fourth gear for the right hand and stay in fourth and hard on the power you're just skimming the curb on the left there be careful not to run wide and then we're going to look out for the number two marker as we break down into third gear staying tight to the curb hard on the power again use a bit of curb on the right now this corner you want to stay as tight to the right as you can stick to the inside i actually ran a little bit wide in and lost a bit of time as you can see there's probably two three hundred just up to this point that i've lost and then we're going to get hard on the power and this corner is flat out in the M3, you do not have to lift so you're going to go into 6th gear and take it flat, we actually took a bit of curb there, scrubbed a little bit of speed off so there was at least 300 just up to this point I think over the lap there's probably half a second altogether and we're going to break just before the four, number 4 mark on the left there and go down into 3rd gear, stay tight again on the inside and hard on the power going into 4th gear and we're going to stay in 4th gear through this left hand and keep it nice and tight and flat out, don't lift nice and tight, use a bit of curve on the right, into 5th gear, then down into 3rd gear and then just stay nice and tight on the right hand side and then hard on the power down the straight as you see there and I think we go over the line for 2 minutes and 04.784 I think um, there was half a second to come off that at least um, this car seems to really suit this track um, I know with the RUF which I put a bit more practice in I could only get, I think I could have got a 204 but I was struggling I, I ended up with 205, 205.0 but we'll go on to that setup next time anyway. So that'll be uploaded hopefully the same day as this is uploaded. So let's go through the setup with you guys quickly now. Okay, so you can see here now we've got slightly more pressures on the front tires to the rear pressures because the M3 handles so well. So we lowered the pressures on the rear to give us a bit more stability through some of the corners on the exit of corners. Brake pressures, we actually managed to run 79%. Could have gone a little bit higher, but a few bends, if you have a bit higher, you risk locking up and running a bit wide, which... I don't like, I'd rather keep it consistent for race setup. You see there, brake mapping all the way to left, as usual. I don't I don't ever have that to right. You're only gonna lose speed putting that to the right. Um gearing. Now you need to take note of all the gearing there because it's adjusted all the way through the point the 1.73, etc. I actually tried to do it for corners, but there's a couple of corners that weren't perfect, but I found that the other corners it outweighed the po like positives outweighed the negatives through the other corners, so that for me at this point of testing on this setup was right. I, I think there may be a little bit of tweaks that could be done, but it should do quite nicely for for a race anyway. Um, maybe for I wouldn't even adjust anything on that actually for a race. That for qualifying and races setup should should pretty much do you for the gearing. If you if you find that some gears you, you're finding it not perfect, maybe tweak it yourself a little bit with the M3. You can really tweak around with the with the gearing. So. You can adjust each individual gear a lot more. Limited slip, just the one percent with this car. You, you need the traction coming out the corners. And um, deceleration slip, I think I could have gone down a little bit more on that. I may try doing the, in another setup with it a little bit lower. Um, the preload had to be a two hundred because this car just does not like getting on the power early, so it just helps smooth the car through the fast corners. Um, then we're going to go on to the radiate was obviously set for qualifying 0% race you need to up it a bit obviously for the M3 um, then we're going to move on to the I think it's the suspension settings now isn't it yeah so it's a bump stop 
and we actually set that all around 10. It was actually set quite high on the predefined settings, but I wanted the car to be stable through the corners. You can see they were quite aggressive as usual with the suspension settings because Road America is quite a smooth track. You can actually go very aggressive on Road America. There's not many bumps. The only thing you need to be really cautious about is the curbs. The curbs will spin you out if you're not careful, but that's about track knowledge and just keeping the car in the safe, safe areas. I don't really like to get too close to a lot of the curbs. There's certain curbs you'll know where to, to be able to attack and others you'll just have to learn where not to. So spring settings as usual, they're, they're quite aggressive all the way through here. The sway bars, reasonably aggressive. Could have probably gone a little bit more aggressive, but if it's a race setup as well, we want a consistency. Camber angles, 2.3 and 1.9. I did have it on 2.6 and 2.2, but I found that with it 2.3 and 1.9, it just felt a little bit um, smoother through the corners. Maybe not too aggressive. Um, the toe angles, a little bit different. Like their usual, what I run for pretty much mostly GT3 cars. It doesn't come standard like that. And downforce, 0 1. You didn't need much downforce on the rear on this car, just 0 1 because you want the straight line speed, obviously, for the long straights. And uh, weight bias, as usual, 50.0. I could have probably have gone a little bit rearwards on that to give myself a bit more stability through the corners. Anyway, all the force feedback, as usual, no difference. Um, hope this setup helps you guys out and I'll be following this up with an RUF GT3 around this track as well. Thanks for watching guys. Goodbye.